Crowd Project's joint webinar on innovative approaches to enhancing media literacy of students and teachers. My name is Peter Pavergi. I'm the CEO of OA Digital, the host of uh, today's event. And thank you very much for our partners and all the contributors, speakers who joined us today. Um, this event is part of the OA Digital Weeks campaign. And I would like to just say a few words about our campaign. Um, the campaign is one of the major pan-European awareness raising campaigns on digital skills for inclusion and empowerment. And it's organized by All Digital Network and its member organizations and other partners across Europe. And it's been running since 2010. And since then, it has helped over 1.4 million people to get online for the first time or enhance their digital skills um, to fully exploit the potentials of digital transformation. Uh, Every year, the awareness raising campaign uh, supports over 100,000 participants. Uh, more than 20 countries are involved through online and offline events. And these events are happening, taking place in digital competence centers, libraries, community centers, schools, and other venues across Europe. And we have international and local partners uh, from, from many European countries. And the motto of this campaign is to enhance your digital skills. It is our call to action, all Europeans to take an active part in, uh, to form their better future. And you, everyone can contribute to this campaign by organizing an event, a training program uh, on digital competences, and you can put your event on the All Digital Weeks dot eu website um, the campaign was opened by eu commissioner maria gabriel uh, last monday and uh, she said among other things that we are at the turning point for development of digital skills and we need the support of all education and training stakeholders and i count on you to carry on bringing this vision forward um, the um, the five weeks of the campaign uh, is focusing on specific weekly topics uh, under which we are organizing events and uh, training programs, and also not only us, but our local partners in many, many places. And the overarching topic of the second week where we are now is fostering digital skills, uh, fostering digital literacy and tackling disinformation. And I would like to mention that the campaign is sponsored, supported by Certiport, Microsoft and Huawei. And the second week in particular is uh, supported by Certiport, um, who is dedicated to helping people succeed through certifications. Certiport is a leading provider of certification exam development and delivery. And um, you can see that we had three events during this uh, week already, and this is the last one, but I would like to highlight a couple of other events which are coming up next week. And I'm just mentioning basically the titles of this week. Next week, we are going to promote the use of the European Digital Competence Framework, DigiComp, and we are going to organize several webinars around uh, the use of the Digicomp in different projects and initiatives. And next week launch event will be the announcement of the updated digital competence framework to its 2.2 version. We have over 130 people registered already. The fourth week is supported by Microsoft, and we are talking, going to talk about achieving cybersecurity and safer internet, and we will organize a couple of webinars and events during that week. And the last week of the campaign is very important, is improving STEM and STEAM skills for the society and encouraging girls and women's participation in STEM studies and careers. Um, so by this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, please uh, keep an eye on other activities during the All Digital Weeks. And I would like to give the floor now to my colleague, Gabriela Ruseva. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. And thank you very much for being so punctual. Uh, just exactly five minutes. Uh, thank you for this very nice introduction into the weeks. Um, I would like to briefly share the agenda for today's event with you uh, and to let you know uh, what we will be doing in the next uh, one hour. Um, so uh, in order to um, 
start. Um, sorry, are you seeing my presenter view? Perfectly. Or... My presenter view on or the normal view. It's 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 good. It's normal. Okay, great. Um, so uh, actually, uh, this event uh, is dedicated to uh, present you two innovative approaches to enhancing media literacy of students and teachers. And these two approaches um, are being developed uh, currently uh, in two uh, European projects. Uh, they have existed before. They are good practices uh, that we are upscaling and we will tell you more about each of them uh, and um, are now being implemented in other countries. So, so first uh, we will hear about the first approach, uh, which is focusing on tackling online hate speech at school. Uh, through non-hostile communication, and we will hear from Chiara Borsini, uh, project manager from EGINA, um, the coordinator of the AMELI project uh, under which this good practice is being upscaled. Uh, and uh, uh, then we will uh, hear from teachers from the field, from actual experiences, uh, from teachers from Greece and uh, Romania, um, about their experience with the materials that we have developed. Um, after that, we will focus, we will go to the second approach, uh, which enhances critical thinking and media literacy through another focus topic, audiovisual content creation, so film literacy. Uh, and uh, that will be me <laughs> who will present uh, this approach. Uh, and finally, uh, hopefully, we will have uh, some time for your questions and for conclusions. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to invite Chiara. Uh, Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, okay, I'm going to share my screen with the presentation. So please let me know if you face any um, issues in seeing my screen. Um, I'm really glad to present today uh, the Amelie project, which is now at its second year of life. Uh, AMELI stands for Advanced Media Literacy Education to Counter Online Hate Speech. Um, the main goal of this project, which is an Erasmus Plus KA2 project, uh, is to provide teachers of all levels and representative of schools, so including also family, with an innovative methodology and approach to counter the phenomenon of online hate speech. Um, so um, the, the main um, aim of the project is to provide uh, with innovative practices, uh, with the aim of tr training teachers and representatives of school, of course, on the project-specific methodology. We will see later on what kind of methodology are at the basis of this project, uh, which actually focus on the formation of advanced media literacy skill for those in educational roles. Uh, our consortium is um, uh, composed by uh, partners from all over Europe, so all digital, of course, from Belgium, uh, the Hellenic Open University from Greece, Parole Ostili from Italy, um, SDC from uh, Germany, uh, EOS from Romania, and Egina from Italy. Um, uh, why do we need to train teachers on how to face the online hate speech phenomenon? We can think that maybe this phenomenon is something that is not related to school. Uh, it has nothing to do with it because it's something that happens outside the school, no? So why should we train teachers on how to deal with this phenomenon? Uh, we got the, the answer to this question actually uh, from the teacher themselves because we run focus group with them and some interesting um, ideas and concerns uh, emerge from this, this focus group with, with this discussion that we had. So first of all, the fact that there's the necessity to engage and take action against hate speech, but at the same time, um, there's a sort of sense of inadequacy uh, on how to deal with this phenomenon, even if it's uh, an urgent necessity um, for the teachers to, uh, to, to be to, to be trained on how to, um, to deal with that and to, to, to make a conscious use of digital devices. Or for example, uh, the fact that um, they uh, usually feel um, like they are um, uh, like swimming in a, in a sea without having the, 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 the tools and the knowledge, a specialized tool especially to, um, to deal 
with that. Um, there's also the, the, um, the, the awareness of the fact that these um, um, digital tools, uh, platforms, social media um, are based on algorithms that reinforce uh, the preferences of the single users. And that has been perceived as um, a problem because um, this mechanism does not, does not allow students to experience the plurality of opinions. And this could lead to a radicalized perception from their side. There's also the need to um, you know, activate positive thinking, um, empathic approach, um, even inside school in order to allow the student to be in the shoes of the victim. So from all these needs that, that emerge from this discussion that we have, um, it's, it's clear now, I mean, um, in, in, in our getting this feedback, it's, it's perfectly clear that uh, countering the phenomenon of online hate speech requires education, where education is, is the key word, in kind, kindness, understanding and respect for others, as well as, of course, a certain degree of awareness about how to use digital communication tools. And schools can have a crucial role to play in this process of change. Um, so how this project try to uh, um, meet these, these needs? These are some of the keywords that are actually really present uh, in the activities that we are also running with, uh, with the Amelie projects, um, which actually, practically speaking, tries to promote the exchange at European level of good practices in, in schools in the field of the fight against online hate speech. It has produced a training course for school education professionals, which is the result of the um, a combination of different existing approach and methodologies, and also um, created a platform for peer learning and crowdsourcing uh, through which participant schools are able already to address the issue um, with the help of learning materials, uh, which has been created by experts, discuss relevant cases and carried out bottom uh, initiatives. And we will see later on through the platform, how is it possible? Um, these are the main results uh, that we're going to achieve with the Amelie project. I'm mentioning them just because we are currently in the second phase of the project, which is the virtual school, school network against online hate speech. Uh, so the online course has been developed and it's uh, available online. We will have a look at it later on. But now we are in the phase where the virtual school network is uh, enlarging. So we had a piloting phase, we run a piloting, piloting phase, which started in January um, and ended at the end of February. And now we are uh, ready to open the, the network to newcomers. Uh, of course, at the end of uh, the second phase where we will uh, get all the feedback from the, the teachers, so our target group, we will be able to, we will be able to also to produce policy recommendation. The, um, uh, the Amelie project, as I said before, is based on two main methodologies. Uh, the Parole Ostili methodology. Parole Ostili is um, an extensive media campaign for the fight against hate speech at all, at at all uh, levels, sorry, and which gives uh, free access to a series of educational materials for school at all levels. While the Sonnet Bull project is based on the use of an interactive platform. Uh, which collects peer-to-peer -peer training activities and material, which is based on the principle of co-creation of materials and um, awareness campaign, so what we call crowdsourcing, for the fight against bullying in particular. Um, what uh, actually happened, um, again, practically speaking, in the Amelie project, project is that teachers work together with their students on the topic of the online aid speech, um, through activities, practical activities in classroom on non-hostile communication. Um, by taking part in these activities, the students learn how to analyze uh, messages that are spread uh, through online media. Uh, they, they learn how to critically assess their purpose and potential effects on them. And they also learn how to choose and promote alternative narratives in their everyday online communication. This method is based in a, in a very 
a simple and effective set of principles which are collected in the manifesto of non-hostile hostile communication, um, which is available on the platform. Uh, and we, we were going to have a look at it also. Um, now I will just sh uh, shift to the platform. Um, so this is the Amelie platform. Um, uh, when you actually go to the link, uh, you will land to this uh, dashboard page. Um, and here, uh, this is the main page, let's say, where um, you have uh, this, this first section, which is uh, one of the most important, which is related to uh, the um, possibility to for the users to really be active on the platform. Um, so uh, the users who come here can, of course, add friends in the sense that they can uh, be in contact with other users uh, on the on the virtual network. Uh, they can post in forums. We will have a look at them later on. Um, they can upload uh, learning objects. And when we talk about learning objects, we refer to this section where you can find um, blog articles, case studies, and best practices together with personal experiences. Um, there's also a, sec a section which is dedicated to school communication campaigns, uh, which refers to the bottom-up activities that the, the, the teachers are going to uh, develop with their students. Um, and then um, here, this is actually um, a link to a webinar presentation of the um, Amelie methodology that we uh, run at the beginning of the piloting phase. Uh, so it's available here also for the newcomers who wants to be trained uh, on the methodology. It's a one hour webinar, um, very detailed. Um, about the Parole Ostile campaign and, and, and the methodology at the base of the um, Amelie project. Uh, and then here, uh, there are the, the, the most important, let's say, uh, documents and guidelines for the users who undertake the learning path through the platform. So um, here you can find the manifesto. We will have a look at it. Um, the teacher's handbook, which is the... Uh, a set of guidelines that we provide to the teachers in order to know exactly what kind of activity they are asked to, uh, to do on the platform. Uh, and of course, the Q&A section where um, the users can refer in order to have the uh, answer related to technical questions, maybe, um, mainly. Um, let's have a look at the manifesto because the manifesto is the main document uh, at the basis of the Amelie methodology. Uh, as I said before, is a set of mm, principles. Um, I would like to go through, through I mean, um, to, to analyze them uh, with you uh, very quickly, but just to give you an idea of the kind of approach uh, we are going, we, we, we want to, uh, to share through the platform and through the project. So first of all, uh, the first principle is that virtual is real. So um, what happened on, on the internet uh, is really related to real life. So the fact that the, there's, there's a screen between uh, uh, me and my virtual audience doesn't mean that I am free to, to do or to say whatever I want. Um, I only write or say what I would dare to say in person. Um, the second principle is uh, um, related to communication. So you, you are what you communicate, um, which means that the word I choose define who I am and they represent me. So it's really important to know how to choose words, even if I use them virtually. Um, words shape the way I think. So um, I, I take all the time I need to express my viewer in the best possible way. Um, listen before you speak. Uh, that was a, a good point for the activity in, uh, in classroom. We will see that all these principles listed here in this document have been used by the online facilitators on the platform in order to stimulate conversation on the, on, uh, on the platform through, um, between the users, but also in order to uh, use these principles as, as an inspiration to run activities in classroom. Uh, so listen before you speak. 
um, is related to the fact that uh, it's really important to listen, of course, because no one can always be right. So it's good also to be open minded um, and, and listen to to um, to what others want to, 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 to say and uh, try to, um, um, to, 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 to really it is related that way to the last point of the manifesto. So uh, don't speak uh, if it's not the case. Um, words are bridges. So I choose words to understand, make myself understood and get close to, to others. Uh, words have consequences. So I am a, the, what we try also to transmit is that uh, we need to be aware of the fact that uh, if I uh, say or write something, uh, that something can have consequences on, on others. Share with care. So I share, um, this is really related to uh, a phenomenon that we, we actually know quite well, like fake news, for example. So I share text and images only after I read it, assessed them and understood them. Um, ideas can be discussed, people, but people must be respected. So those whose views and opinion differ from mine are not necessarily enemies to be destroyed, but they could actually stimulate a good conversation and we can exchange opinions. An insult is not an argument. So I won't accept um, offensive and aggressive words, even if they support my point of view. And then the last point, so silence says something too. So when it's better to keep quiet, I, I try to do that. Um, so uh, I wanted to share uh, this, this document because as I said before, uh, it has been a very stimulated um, occasion uh, also to, um, for the teachers to share their experience in classes. So for example, I would like to share this example from the um, learning object section where there's the possibility for the user also to share good practices and case studies as we, said, as we, we have seen before. And here, for example, uh, based on the share with care principle of the, of the manifesto, um, one of the teachers shared as a best practice, uh, the activity that uh, um, they run in class. Uh, so this is really a, a good, uh, I think a good, uh, a really a good occasion to, uh, to share experiences and present them as good practices that also other teachers can, uh, from other countries can, uh, can see and, and, and comment. Um, I would like to uh, also go through the platform a little bit more because I would like to share, um, for example, uh, the, uh, this section, community section. This is really, really important because uh, this is the place where the exchange actually happen. Uh, so you can see here that you, we have groups uh, and forums. Uh, on the forum, it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's quite clear uh, the kind of activity that I mentioned before. So the fact that uh, you see here, we have uh, national groups and the European groups. Well, um, here the um, international uh, exchanges happens. And as you can see, um, these are all the points taken from the manifesto where the, on the online facilitator uh, used in order to uh, stimulate discussion. Um, the groups, as I said before, uh, if you go uh, in the specific section on the platform, you would see that we have uh, national groups uh, and inside them communication exchange happens. Um, the training materials, uh, as you can see, uh, it's possible to choose the age group um, related to uh, classes. And uh, once you get here, you have the chance to go inside uh, what we call worksheets, which are um, sheets uh, where uh, the activities that the teachers can uh, run in class are very detailed. So here, of course, you can download the PDF um, so that they can also be printed and used in class. Uh, but uh, here you also find the, um, um, let's say, the, the detail for each section of these worksheets, 
where you find the principle of the manifesto to which the worksheet is related, um, the key questions at the basis of the activity that uh, it is possible to run in class, sources and materials, uh, the, the detailed description of the activity with the related timing, and tips and other activities uh, in order to um, continue uh, the, the work with students. And of course, teachers have the possibility, users have the possibility to comment uh, and share. And this is really nice because in some occasion, for example, here, um, some of the teachers shared uh, pictures um, or other materials to uh, show um, also, you know, bottom-up initiatives um, that was actually made by the students, so like this one, for example, no? So it's really nice to also have the possibility to, uh, to share experiences. Um, this, of course, will be also part of the communication campaign that uh, we will start running from April on. Um, and um, yeah, that's uh, that's mainly what I would like to what I wanted to to show you about the the platform. I'm going back uh, to the presentation just to share um, some basic information about where you can find us. So um, this is the link uh, for the Amelie uh, project website. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, which is really uh, rich in content, uh, topic-related content, and also um, an Instagram uh, page. So thank you. I hope I've been uh, uh, in time. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chiara. Yes, uh, you are perfectly in time. Great. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for keeping it. Uh, and now, after this um, uh, very comprehensive introduction uh, into the project and the platform, which is really difficult to, to make in such a short time because the project has so many different aspects uh, that um, come together <laughs> and um, and build the whole puzzle, uh, such as the platform, but also the materials, the uh, the working sheets uh, or the lesson plans that the teachers can, as you said, directly print and use. Uh, then the, the forum and then the competition of um, communication campaigns, uh, the kind uh, speech day campaigns, which will come uh, later. Um, but uh, now I think uh, it will be really great to hear from some teachers what they actually did with uh, all those things that, that you explained. Um, I would like to invite uh, first um, teacher from, uh, teachers from the uh, uh, second Lyceum of Xanti in Greece, Anestis and Katerina, to share how you use the platform there. Thank you. Hello uh, from me too. Uh, my name afternoon. is Katerina Lazudi and I'm from I'm a teacher of um, ancient and modern Greek language and literature. Also at the second uh, Lyceum of uh, Inxanthi in a small town in northern Greece. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to participate in this ambitious program, Ameli program, and I would like to um, uh, thank. Uh, thank Thank the second director of my school, Anis Xaftopoulos, because he gave us uh, the chance to take part in this uh, program. Uh, he always uh, strengthens our educational motivations. Thank you very much, Anesti. Uh, <laughs> I will explain you how I work so, um, until now with my students. And Anesti will show you the students' projects. So far, I have worked with a, with a class from the first grade from my school. Uh, I think they're 16 now, these uh, children, years old. Uh, I, we used the, um, um, the platform, the material from platform from Amelie and uh, related to John Biden's uh, speech. The students work in groups, they collaborate, they uh, translated the speech into the Greek language, uh, practicing their translation skills at first. Then they were concerned on the form and content of the speech. They discussed the format, 
arguments, persuasion, and structure of his speech, and uh, they concerned about if they follow the speech, the specific principles from the manifesto, as uh, Mrs. Gabriela Borsin showed us from the MLE platform. Children quickly realized that the human speech and uh, much more political speech, uh, public speech has intent and creates uh, literature, cultural identify, uh, identities of people. So nothing is uh, so, so nothing it's not so, so nothing it is not as ancient as it seems. Words can uh, become bridges that uh, unit or separate people and countries also. Um, they understand that um, the shape of uh, the the language, uh, how do we read or how do we write uh, ourselves on social media or or on on the internet. Um, influences very much. Uh, at the end of uh, this um, activity, students created their own cloud words as uh, follows the principles of the manifesto. Uh, and as this can show us from the speech of uh, John Biden, and um, they uh, make uh, some posters also. And as the, you can show students work if you want and uh, we have um, and I have planned uh, another one actually with uh, older students in the second grade from my school uh, it was an activity which was related to the Panhellenic day against school violence which um, is celebrated here in Greece in 6th of March on the occasion of this day, the students spoke with a psychologist who visited us from the topic public structure expression called, which is a center for the prevention of addictions and um, promotion of uh, psychosocial health. Our goal was to take on the concept of empathy, sympathy, through free uh, dialogue and group play, the students were concerned about the violence that exists in such a strong form in society and the anger that uh, leads people to verbal and violence, and not only verbal violence. They, they realized that they could find themselves in position to be bullied or um, intimated from other classmates if they do not have empathy. They spoke honestly, they opened their minds and hearts, and they realized that the importance of being able to take the place of the other. Uh, and in this program, uh, children uh, designed a poster with a group work where it was the draft of a sticker that was painted and stuck on the t-shirts of the students of this class with slogans against school bullying. Uh, and as you can show the Students, Thank you very uh, much. This sounds uh, really great. Yeah, Thank you. Really congratulate you. <laughs> it, uh, it sounds and, uh, uh, amazing. We have uh, a lot of plans to do. <laughs> um, we will um, follow the, the activity that you share also on the platform. Please do share all of this on the platform. I'm sure you're already doing it. Um, I give now the floor to Anestis and then, um, well, uh, let's make sure that also the other teachers um, can have some, some time to share their experience. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Anestis. Uh, I also teach in the second exam of Xanthi. I'm the vice principal the last five years. Uh, I'm the contact between the Greek leading team of Amelie and our school. And I coordinate uh, what happens in our school in this program. There are 10 uh, teachers engaged with this program in our school. Uh, Katerina is the most active. <laughs> she's the first, she's leading the, she has a really new role. The others are now preparing some, um, to, they're testing the material and they're trying to prepare some uh, original educational material, test it, and then we will um, upload it on the platform, meeting the, the platform standards. Uh, we. Uh, made uh, a digital lesson, the college lesson, uh, in, our, in our school's uh, LMS, Learning Management System, which is in, uh, based in E-Class, so that uh, we can um, have our uh, students enroll in this lesson and uh, so that they can uh, cooperate and, uh, with each other 
just like, because the um, Amelie platform is just for teachers. So we, went, we wanted to make a, a room for them to, to, to communicate and uh, upload their material and uh, engage each other. Uh, this is the, uh, what I'm showing you, this is the, the Amelie uh, lesson. Uh, where uh, we have a few words about the program. And uh, this is where we will uh, have bring uh, other teachers from uh, nearby schools to meet the program and uh, invite them to, to join. Uh, we have the learning uh, objects uh, that are in Greek and English uh, here uh, so that the teachers can find it easily and the, and the students too. And uh, this is uh, where we have uh, the class implementation. Each teacher that uh, uses one of these uh, or more material in class uh, uploads it here so the others know what is done. And uh, we communicate each other, we discuss it, and then we, could, we also upload it to the platform of uh, the central platform of Amelie. And uh, this is where we will. Uh, uh, keep our, uh, the material that we will produce and share it with others uh, also on the platform. Uh, this is the, what uh, Katerina did with uh, her students. I will show a few that they... Uh, this is the, the manifest... Uh, uh, let me go principles. The principles. In ancient Greek language. This is in ancient Greek, yes. Uh, in English, uh, this is the principle number two. You are what you communicate. Uh, words can um, create a uh, way of thinking. Uh, listen before you speak. They've made it in Greek, of course, but we will translate it also in English and upload it. Uh, number eight, number nine, number nine again. These are the word clouds that they created. And I think that is all for now. They still could continue to uh, upload the material and we put it here. This looks great. Uh, actually, can I ask you, uh, so these um, posters that were created, the, the, the students uh, used uh, computers to create them? I mean, they create them through um, digital tools as well, yes, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So Platform. they also, in a way, increased their digital skills by yes. uh, getting acquainted with those tools and uh, using them to create those posters. Yes, we want to test the material that's on the platform and uh, contribute, uh, give the feedback that, that's needed. But we also want to create our own material so that we can uh, enrich the material that's uh, uploaded on the platform. Great. Unless they use the Canva program. The Canva, yeah. The Canva, yes, that's what I thought. Thank uh, you very uh, much. This was really you're uh, welcome. inspiring. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your, for your attention. <laughs> now I would like to, to invite another Greek teacher from, um, the Aristot uh, from the experimental school of the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Corina Maliara. Uh, Corina, uh, please share your experience. Uh -huh. Just keep in the time frame as well, because we have a lot of content, uh, but please uh, be welcome to, to share your experience. Okay, so uh, my name is Corina Mallara, uh, and uh, I'm a teacher at the Experimental School of Aristotle University Thessaloniki. Uh, so, uh, so far, uh, we have only been working on the, pro uh, on the program for, uh, for a month now, and uh, my students are in the third grade of uh, junior high school, which means they are 15 years old on average. And uh, so what we have done so far is uh, we started with uh, the video uh, promoting the, the campaign, uh, the one which is uh, available on uh, Parolo Stili YouTube channel. And uh, so we watched the video as an introduction. And uh, then we moved on to, uh, to a PowerPoint presentation I found on uh, the platform 
Uh, this, pre uh, this presentation is related to the manifesto. Uh, it explains and exemplifies its uh, principle uh, of the manifesto. So we devoted uh, three hours on the PowerPoint because uh, students had uh, had to had to say a lot. Uh, and uh, then uh, what we did, uh, we did an activity which, uh, which is uh, named our campaign for the manifesto. And uh, that was our first activity and uh, we are still working on it. Uh, so what we did there was uh, we went over uh, five of the principles of the manifesto and then the students formed uh, groups and uh, worked on uh, creating a product so as to promote one of, the, of those principles. And uh, they came up, I have to say, with brilliant ideas. So we are in the process right now of uh, creating videos uh, with uh, stories they have made up. Uh, some others used online tools and uh, they, are, uh, they made a cartoon story. Uh, some others made a digital poster. And uh, there were some uh, girls who made uh, their own t-shirts with uh, slogans. Uh, I also have an animated story. So all these, uh, <laughs> I hope I, I will soon uh, be able to share with you. Uh, hopefully um, in a week or two, mm -hmm, I will uh, upload them. On Sounds the great. We are looking forward to, to <laughs> seeing all these materials and um, congratulations to, to, to all the activities. Um, uh, what I have to say, yeah. say that uh, almost everyone, even, uh, even students who were not that active, uh, participated there and uh, in the discussions and uh, they expressed opinions, beliefs, they shared experiences and um, and I was impressed by their uh, their spirit their That's great. Um, do you think that the use of um, digital tools or um, asking them to make videos or online posters also increased their interest in a way and uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely, right. yes. And uh, last thing is that um, I don't know if it is possible, but uh, at some point, uh, I would like to see them uh, discussing the issue of hate speech uh, with fellow students from other schools, countries. I mean, arrange an online meeting for students. This is a great input. I think we can definitely discuss this among the the project and the partners and um, think of some right. way to to provide a tool for the teachers. It, it's a really good uh, because think, they are idea. eager to to see what others other yeah. students. This is a very important added value of participating in such projects. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, I would thank like now you. to um, hand over to Anka. Anka is a teacher, an English uh, teacher at uh, Mircea Tselbatron. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank no, you very much. Uh, please introduce yourself. You will do it better than me. I have been teaching French and English for almost uh, 23 years. Uh, and now I am also the vice headmaster of the, the school. Um, so to be sincere, if at the beginning I was a little skeptic about the fact how my students will react and how my students, how active they will be, um, to my surprise, they were very open-minded and very open. Uh, so first of all, so I, I worked with some, so first of all, I worked with students in the fifth grade, which means 12 years old. Uh, and then um, with the students uh, in the first, last last class, which is of uh, the high school, uh, they are 18 years old. 
so as I told you at the beginning, some, some of them uh, were, were not very active at the beginning. But meanwhile, they started being very active and very open. And uh, after I showed uh, them the, the platform the, and the, the, that video, uh, Paroli Ostili, uh, I don't know the, what's the name of the, I don't remember right now. The, so they were <coughs> very communicative. Uh, first, uh, we, I, I, uh, we did the worksheet with the, the words in a jar. So all of them participated and wrote on some uh, pieces of paper the experiences they have, bad experiences they had uh, online. You know, but <laughs> talking about the fact that they stay online all the time, you know, they, it's a problem for us because they use the phones even during the classes and it's a fight with them. So I think that's why they were very active and uh, finally they started talking very freely about uh, their problems. Uh, and then uh, I um, showed them the, the worksheet, uh, our campaign for the manifesto. So they were very active as well. So separated in groups, they also um, shared the, the, the principles for the manifesto and they, I will, uh, just a moment, I will share the screen because I want you to show the, their final pro productions, which are very, very beautiful. Uh, at the end, they were rewarded. <laughs> I didn't tell them at the beginning that they will be rewarded. I don't know what happens. I can share. Okay, just a moment. Okay. No. First of all, so they made posters like that. Can you see them? So stop bullying, words, shape. Yes, we way. see. Perfect. Ink, so stupid, ugly, loser. So these are the words they maybe they meet uh, most of the time on the internet uh, to their uh, Facebook uh, accounts or others. Okay, then another one, you know. So I let them, so I didn't give them any ideas. I let them uh, use their imagination and their creativity. And that's the final production of them, of theirs, sorry. Then I also, we also have a poster here. No? So what is, uh, if the words you said or heard about yourself or, or it on your skin for the whole world to see? So very imaginative. And then here we have, not here, just a moment. Uh, we have a video because they also make some videos. Can you hear it? Is the problem with the sound? Unfortunately, we don't hear the sound, but uh, we can see the, the video. And it's I tough. Think, yeah, yeah, it's a problem. I don't know, but you can see. I think that uh, we, yeah, can see very well.
and they they did this in a very short period of time. So I think in uh, three or four days, so they all finished uh, it. So uh, as I told you, so just a moment, they uh, liked very much the idea of doing that. And now I want to show you another video. So if I understand correctly, the first um, the materials in the first video they did um, by hand, and uh, these ones uh, they did uh, by um, using uh, some software to create those uh, images, right? Those posters. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the the sound? No, unfortunately, we cannot uh, hear the sound. Oh, well, what well. can I do? Because they are talking right now. So uh, here we have their voice. Okay, well, maybe the best thing is if you can just post the link uh, to the video in the chat, uh, then we can watch it yeah. because we also need to uh, to move mm -hmm. on to the next topic. Uh, I have another one. So we have two videos made by them. It's They are made in Prezi video. Okay, is it possible to, to send us the link to both of them? Yeah, and the I chat? have here another one. So and they have two videos. And uh, I will uh, put them, though, these yes, videos. Yes, great. Please um, put them in the chat. The and, comments uh, there, I don't know. Uh, on the... Yeah, there is a chat uh, yeah. function in the, in the <clears throat> Zoom. You can uh, just copy paste them, mm -hmm. the links, and mm -hmm. we will have a look. Uh, we will also include them if you allow us. This is uh, one yeah. of the posters made by them, <clears throat> the last one. So the conclusion is that they were very pleased to do all these activities and I, I was I, I was surprised you know as I, I told you I was very skeptic at the beginning I didn't know uh, if they will if they would do it if they want to do it so but they will they, they did it very well thank you thank you very much for your contribution thank you for for your attendance and for your work, most of all, because this is actually <laughs> the, well. the, the main point of Amelie. Yeah, that, I, that I also talked to some of my uh, colleagues, and uh, they uh, also they are interested in uh, in being uh, part of the, the the project, and they will be soon. Thank you very much, Anka, thank you and as well. uh, good luck for the next activities. Uh -huh. and thank for, you, thank you. For sure, we will uh, stay tuned and uh, follow on uh, what you are sharing also on the Amelie platform. So um, now after these uh, inspirational contributions, uh, I would like to move to the next topic for today, uh, which is the other methodology that I mentioned uh, in the beginning. It's about the creative audiovisual labs. Uh, the creative audiovisual labs case, uh, they also aim to enhance uh, media literacy skills of students and teachers. And now uh, I'm going to tell you more. I'm going to tell you how it is different in some ways from Amelie, from the project that uh, we already discussed and how it is similar in other ways. Uh, but first of all, um, what is media literacy? We are talking today about uh, enhancing young people's media literacy. Uh, and I thought that it would be useful to remind ourselves uh, what exactly we are talking about, because media literacy is one of those concepts that are actually um, very broad and uh, are subject to various interpretations. Uh, so, um, this is uh, one of the broadest uh, definitions that I found. Uh, it's by the European Commission, and it says that it is all the skills, so technical, but also cognitive, social, civic, and creative capacities that allow us as citizens to access and have a critical understanding, so not just to consume, but also to understand and even to create, it's not in the definition, um, the media and uh, interact with it. And if we consider what is media, then 
the topic gets even broader because uh, media is all the different means of uh, mass communication um, that are present. Um, the television, the internet, the radio, the newspapers, uh, everything collectively, every uh, medium through which uh, we can transfer information to others. So this is just to, to set the scene, uh, that topic is really broad and really important and really um, is part of every um, sphere of our lives. Uh, and with regards to young people, especially because um, uh, they are considered, uh, especially the Generation Z, which is born <clears throat> after the year uh, 2000, as digital natives, born and raised in the digital era. But as uh, Commissioner Gabriel, the European Commissioner for Education, uh, Youth and Culture, uh, said at our opening event last week, uh, no one is born uh, with digital competencies. So even though they are born in this era, it doesn't mean that um, they are able to um, understand uh, and to interact with media and with technology in a critical and informed way. Uh, so that's why all these projects, that's why all these activities are so important. And now concretely about the CROW project. Um, the CROW stands for Creative Audiovisual Labs for the Promotion of Critical Thinking and Media Literacy. I will give you just very briefly some uh, administrative information uh, about the project and then I will move more to the content side. Uh, it's an Erasmus Plus K3 project. Uh, it's implemented uh, in Croatia, Greece, Italy, Lithuania and Spain. It runs for three years from January last year to January the year after next year uh, and uh, it offers the main product that it offers is an innovative methodology on audiovisual education. It is aimed at teachers and young people, uh, students of high school, so from 14 to 19, whereas in the AMELI project uh, it uh, targets, a, let's say, wider age group in terms of the students here, it's really focused on high school students. Here are the partners, um, the partner organizations from those countries that I mentioned. And here is a um, uh, quote from the uh, methodology, from the project methodology that every image represents a point of view and transforms reality into a narrative. Um, every um, piece of information that uh, we find we interact with we find on the internet or offline is uh, has an author with their own um, point of view and uh, agenda the methodology um, dates back to 1988 it's the uh, product of many years of work actually it's not just something that we invented with this project and uh, that we started to develop uh, last year. No, it's uh, really uh, based on uh, years long research and practice. Uh, it uh, originates uh, in Italy. And uh, these are the two authors of the methodology, Agno Giorgino Stasi and Mary Tortolini. Agno is a linguist, a writer and screenwriter, film director from Italy. Uh, and uh, Mary Tortolini is also an artist, painter, essayist and teacher. And together they, they started developing this uh, laboratory of uh, image and creative writing and, uh, at the University of Sapien La Sapienza in Rome which then transformed, uh, so the, the, the methodology evolved and uh, through their learning, uh, they improved it and um, uh, added uh, different aspects. Uh, finally evolved into the uh, setup of these creative workshops, uh, sounds and images in motion at the Italian Central Institute for Sounds and Audiovisual Assets in 2013. So this is a little bit the history. This is really not for not a lesson in history uh, for you to remember, but uh, really more of a um, way to substantiate this methodology and to explain that uh, it is really well tested and proven experience that we are trying to now to bring to uh, European level to translate it. 
not only linguistically speaking, but also um, in terms of concepts uh, and uh, bring it to more teachers and more students. Uh, so th these are the 10 modules for teachers. So there is a training for teachers um, that we are preparing right now and will start from the beginning of the next school year. And the teachers will uh, study these 10 modules. Uh, and then uh, they will, when they finish their learning experience, they will um, actually implement uh, the, the methodology uh, with their students. Um, this is uh, some numbers. Uh, so as I said, the main product of the project is this one innovative methodology uh, on uh, audiovisual education, the methodology on how to set up creative audiovisual labs in schools. Uh, there are the 10 modules for teachers. Uh, overall, they will learn um, 20 hours. The course uh, is 20 hours of online learning and five face-to-face -face workshops. Um, they will uh, experiment it in their schools. Uh, 60 teachers will be involved in this experimentation and uh, 300 students, and they will finally produce uh, 20 films. Uh, then there will be uh, national context for the best films and a uh, European contest. So what does this online course look like for the teachers? Uh, there is a platform, obviously, if we are talking about an online course, uh, there is always a platform involved um, where they can find the, all the modules. Um, and uh, each module consists of various activities. Uh, but the main, um, let's say, components of the modules are video lessons. Uh, so there are 10 video lessons, one for each module, uh, where actually the teachers can see the um, this methodology being implemented in practice. And this is really valuable because um, unlike other courses where you read the theory and then you have to go and experiment it yourself, here you can already see someone who has experimented it and um, you can already see the, the reactions of the students and, uh, and have a better idea of what you can expect. Of course, of course, it can be different, of course. Um, while, uh, implementing something in one setting with uh, one group of students is not the same, uh, but it gives already a very practical and hands-on idea. And then uh, these video lessons are accompanied also by um, a handbook or edu pack for the teachers where uh, all these things that they see in the video lessons are explained um, in a very uh, practical way. So this is how it looks on the left side, you can see the, the video lesson. Uh, so the teacher who follows the course would watch the video lesson and then will read the document, uh, which you can see on the right side, uh, where all the topics, the learning objectives, the key questions are explained. And this is only one page of the document. Uh, this is followed by a very detailed session plan. So the teachers have um, activity by activity, a session outline that they can um, run with the students. There are, of course, additional reading materials, um, PowerPoint presentations that can help the teachers when they are uh, working with the students. So all of this, um, is underpinned by some principles, uh, like the principles of the Manifesto on Non-Hostile Communication, which um, Chiara mentioned, and then also the teachers used in the schools. Uh, here we extracted some principles on, um, on promoting the creative potential of, of young people. And actually these principles are quite universal. Um, they can be applied to different uh, areas of, of life and uh, of teaching. Um, and um, they are aimed to really uh, open the mind and, um, and motivate young people to think uh, creatively and to act creatively. Uh, so I'm not going to, to read through throughout all of them because uh, we are running a bit uh, out, out of uh, schedule with the event. Uh, but of course, um, for anyone who is interested, uh, you can find the manifesto on the website of the project. Uh, I'm just going to say that uh, 
yeah, these principles uh, underpin this uh, this methodology and all the teachers who would like to be involved in this course and to then set up these creative audiovisual labs in their school, they should first have a look at these principles and think about whether they adhere to them or not, because if they don't, then it's not going to work. But if they do, they can have great, amazing results uh, with their students. Um, unlike the Amelie uh, platform, uh, in this case, uh, this is not open to anyone. Uh, we will uh, do a selection of the teachers in each country because, as you saw, the course is online but also offline with the face-to-face -face workshops. And the methodology is really uh, designed uh, based on human interaction. Um, so uh, it's not really sufficient to, uh, to only look online at the materials. Um, but we will, of course, um, think about ways how to make this more accessible to also to be uh, upscaled in other countries if there is uh, interest. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, of course, we have to mention that the project was supported by the Erasmus Plus program. And um, I would like to also welcome uh, you for some questions. Uh, you can uh, raise your hand uh, or simply unmute yourself or post in the chat, whatever you prefer, if any questions on this methodology or on the previous ones that were presented. Thank you very much for the attention. I will stop the sharing and now the floor is yours. Okay, seems that <laughs> it was a lot of interesting information, but probably um, Concerning the time is needed to be processed. I have a question. Yes, <laughs> Sorry. please, Anka. So concerning go ahead. now, we we have to invite the five of our colleagues to register the the platform. How will this happen? So they only register themselves, or should we tell write them their names somewhere? I don't know how this will happen. And is it Chiara? enough just to register? <laughs> or how this will happen? Um, yeah, the idea is that, of course, you invite your colleagues to join the platform so that they can uh, register themselves. Of course, um, the the role of the, the, the mm, let's say, the initial users, so the, the first teachers that um, who experimented the platform would be uh, also to be like mentors uh, yeah. in a way for newcomers. Um, so, yeah, I would say that it's, it's always good to invite them to join the platform. Of, co of course, on the platform, the online facilitators will be there to help, to support. What we usually do is also to organize um, call, uh, short webinars, uh, nationally, national, let's say, uh, meeting mm -hmm. in order for the trainers to give all the information and support to the um, to the teachers and the, the newcomers. So, um, of course, so, you can always rely on us. Uh, but yeah. So they will join, you will have their names, and you will invite them uh, maybe in a future webinar if you have. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Th this oh, is okay, something good. that we organize locally, of course. But mm -hmm. uh, first thing to do is for sure to invite them to join the platform, register exactly as you did the first time. And then on the platform, um, of course something will still happen so yeah um, they have to be active yeah <laughs> exactly that's the point yeah. <laughs> we are yeah, going to stimulate is. the conversation of course yeah so, i will present the, them as soon as possible i will present them the platform as i yeah. told you they are some of them were very interested in the idea of uh, taking part in this uh, activity so uh, as soon as possible, they will join the, the platform and then, then they will do beautiful activities. I'm sure, I'm sure of it. <laughs> thank thank you. you, thank you. Thank you very much for your involvement. <clears throat> there is a comment on the chat uh, from Reni Dimitrova about another similar project uh, rain called Rainbow. And she says that she will promote the information to her colleague. Thank you very much, Reni. 
um, for your interest. And of course, uh, don't hesitate also to to mention about uh, your project if you want now, or we will have a look or just post the link uh, to the project website in the chat if you would like us to, to visit it. Um, <clears throat> well, last call for any final comments or questions, and uh, then I think we can thank each other and wish each other a nice evening. Okay, thank you very much. Once again, thanks a lot to our speakers, to Chiara and to our teachers um, who um, are doing such an inspiring work in the schools. Um, thank you very much to all the participants for joining the event. We do hope that it was useful and uh, it generated interest uh, on the projects. Uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us uh, if you want to know more or if you want to be involved in the future activities. And have a nice evening. Enjoy. Shall we have a group photo? Bye. Of course. Why not? Um, then we would like to ask you, if you don't mind, if you want to be in the photo, to turn on your cameras. And um, I don't know uh, yeah. who will make it. Victoria, mm -hmm. are you going to do it? All right. One, two, three, I think, wait. Emily. <laughs> Perfect. All good. Thank you very much for staying with us until the end, even though we are 12 minutes behind the schedule. Thank you too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.